Here I am on a really weird edaphic situation, a really weird soil. Just looks like this caliche, uh, mixture of caliche and then limestone bedrock. Certainly calcareous though, uh, with one of Texas's rarest plants. This little bastard right here, Paranichia congesta. I think it just got put on the endangered species list. There's those little tiny flowers. It's in the carnation family, Caryophyllaceae. And uh, I think it's only known from two sites. In beautiful Jim Hogg County. Who was Jim Hogg? Look, there's another one. These little diminutive tiny plants growing with uh, Liatris punctata and Euplocatorii. Those tiny little yellow flowers, Caliandra conferta, or conferta folia conferta, I forget what the fuck anyway. Incistro cactus right there with those hooked spines. And that Thelosperma is cool, that Thelosperma. I think it's just filifolium. Hey, look at it, there's a tiny little liatris. Look at it. Liatris punctata, holy shit. That's a plain species. You don't normally see that out here uh, in the South Texas brushlands of desert. That, whose beautiful landscape has been marred by those wind turbines. Wind turbines, oil wells. Over there you got the, that moth pollinated guy with those white tube flowers sticking up. That's Mandevilla lanuginosa, Apocinaceae. Bunch of good shit here. Savalia sinuata, a stinging plant. This is a, a wonderful plant community. Really cool, uh, really rare plant. Just fucking, man, I'm in heaven. A lot of good stuff going on here. Look at that. God damn, that's nice. You got the little Physeria too, that blue-leaved mustard, Brassicaceae. Hey, look at that liatris, man. Nobody in South Texas is growing that. But that's a, that is a desert liatris. That is a, probably one of the most heat-tolerant liatris, right up there with liatris carazans. Oh yeah, see, we still got some moth-pollinated flowers on the mandevilla going off. Ooh, it's got a scent to it still. And there's those little bullhorn fruits when they open. God, that's a nice plant. Oh, look, who's that? Who was that? Is that a Kinoceris fichia or a Mammillaria or Escobaria or what? A little cacti hiding around in a caliche. Stuff probably dissolves readily under uh, hydrochloric acid. Yeah, what a cool one. God damn. Why are you so rare? Where'd you come from, huh? Paranichia is a cool genus. I've seen quite a few... Uh, Mostly in the western half. You get there's a cool one. You get Paranichia jamesii, uh, which also likes these thin soil rock formations. You get it up near Dallas, I think throughout Texas. I've seen it in quite a few places. Edwards Plateau area. There's a couple cool uh, Paranichia species I've seen in Colorado, California, etc. another beautiful morning in South Texas. I have not been on a property that's this rich in a long time. We got Caliandra conferta right here. One of the quote uh, fairy dusters, feather dusters, whatever the name is, and the fruits are maturing. This is a plant that I, I definitely wish I saw in cultivation more. And it's not, see look, it's actually getting ready to flower again. It looks like they got some rain. God, those fruits. But they, they, look at the, the legume fruit is pointing up. And then, of course, we got Lipia graviolens. Mexican oregano smells incredible. Verbenaceae is the family. Of those, those little verbena flowers, they're axillary coming right out the axles where those opposite leaves are. We got black brush right there. And we've got this red sand. This red sandy, well, that's like a sandy loam. And everything is alive. You can see, once again, we got... We got the lichens and uh, cryptogamic crust, which is a bacteria everywhere. Theolosperma simplicifolium right here, Asteraceae. Kind of, it's a crime that none of this stuff is readily available in cultivation. This is what should be being planted. Oh yeah, look at this guy over here. Just finishing up blooming for the night, Mandevilla lanuginosa. That's another one that should be in cultivation. It's not. It's a tragedy. Look at the, the white undersides, those white abaxial surfaces, all just tiny hairs protecting the plant's uh, leaf stomata from transpiring too much moisture. See, moth pollinated flower. It's a long tube. Smells incredible. Convergent evolution of scents, of floral scents among moth pollinated flowers. Oh, look at that. Was it a queen or a monarch or what? They're loving the lipia, though. And that lipia is incredibly drought-tolerant to the point that it, it needs 
it needs dry soil. Once established, you can't overwater. It needs to get blasted with this 100 degree Texas sun, South Texas sun, and it needs dry soil. Look at this wonderful little escarpment here of caliche. You got Fizeria fendleri. Native mustard, that's a small one. They get really cool yellow flowers when they go off. Oh, it's a little Jotropha die a week of getting started. God, look at this. What a fucking... Thank God this is protected. Except you gotta watch out for killer bee colonies down there. You know, sometimes they, they like to nest in those cavities. If you hear a buzzing, start running. Here's Gocnadia hypoluca, a young one. Nahuatlia hypoluca now. Asteraceae, really cool lineage. It's in its own in its own subfamily. Yeah, see there you go. There's that Physeria fendleri. Cool little native mustard, native brassica, four petals, six stamens in those flowers. We got down there, Thymophila. One of the Thymophila species is that Pentakita. Looks like it. You also get Tetranurus caposa here. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, Eisenhardia, Texana, another another legume. There's a large Gocnadia. Oh, the dreaded buffalo grass down there. Sencris ciliaris. You got the, those plumes, horrible grass species. Important where it's native, but a fucking nightmare here. Little rock gardens, man. Little rock gardens. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that down there. Ipomea. Look at that. You got that uh, member of Convolvulaceae. Look at that. Oh, God. Look at You can see that swallowtail flutting around hitting the Isenhardia down there. So many wonderful native plants down here that so few know about. And even even fewer of them are grown in cultivation. See there's, look, look you can see the fruits of that uh, Physeria fendleri. See why they call it bladder pod? Still got those four sepals persisting. They've turned green. You get that swollen ovary in, a, in the uh, center right there. Oh, look, here's a Physeria in flower. Look at that. You get those banana shaped anthers. anthers. Six stamens, four petals, four sepals, but again, those scale like leaves. And it's a perennial. It's got a little woody stem down there. Now, as we descend down this sketchy escarpment, look at this beautiful Nahuatlia. Oh, look, we got Zinnia austrotexana, too. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, there's South Texas Zinnia. What is that? What are those fruits? Is that a, I think that's Hebocarp. I think that's Polygalaceae. Looks like a, almost a brassica, but I think it's polygalaceae. As we head down, look at this beautiful Gocnadia. No, oh, there's Passiflora tenua loba. Those leaves. Look at this stuff, how this is just, it is. It's like just like a natural cement. It's the caliche. This is a new uh, kind of edaphic endemism. I found caliche endemics. Croton and canis. This thing needs to definitely needs to be in cultivation. Croton and canis is like a small shrub. Ugh. Beautiful shrub. Yeah, look at this stuff. See this? Almost looks volcanic. Wow, look at that Gocnadia. Look at that. Holy hell. Look at splitting this big caliche deposit. See, almost looks like volcanic ash. It's just weathered caliche. It's a natural cement. Look at that zinnia. Look at that. All this stuff is just growing out of basically pure calcium. Hefia, brevifolia, like El Jefe. It's a cool little composite. Look, it's got that subtended, uh, those things that subtend the fly the phyleries. Beautiful little, uh, what do you call those, colliculi, I suppose? Whole, all the leaves just covered in scales and hairs. All right, right, now I'll teach you how to get good plant photos. So see, I want to get a photo of this uh, Hefia brevifolia, because although I've seen it many times, this is an, a perfect specimen that I'd like to use a reference for drawing or maybe put in a book or presentation eventually. So all I got to do to get that nice black background is use a 105 millimeter macro lens, set it to a high aperture, like say f29, make sure the what's behind it is dark or in the shade. Uh, relative to how bright it is outside, this will do fine. Also, I can open, sometimes open the back of my pickup truck and 
Yeah, the truck bed, you know, I got a camper shell on top and I'll just use that. But you just need that dark background and then I'll use a flash. So, so high, small aperture and then a flash with a macro lens and boom. You'll get the photo like you're seeing right here. It really enunciates all those, those little hairs on the bracts that subtend the flower head, the phyleries, the red margins on the phyleries, etc. All right, there we got Cremaria erecta with those small leaves. Or, uh, excuse me, Cremaria ramosissima, excuse me. Beautiful flowers on that. God, it's such a crime that so many people don't know what any of this stuff is. They've never seen it before. They'll never have any access to it. So much land is private, and what's not private is either destroyed or... It really is a travesty. There's so many... Oh, we got a nice hibiscus marchianus over there. Little red-flowered hibiscus. That's what I would love to do. That's what I take it upon myself to do, is introduce people to plants, to the things that compose the living world that we're all a part of, and that in our ignorance and short-sightedness, our very naive and juvenile state of being as a species right now, we are destroying. That's what I want to do. Look at that fucking, look at that. Look at that Nahualia. Nahualia gognadia. It's, you know, it's hard for me to get used to the new term. I, I learned it as gognadia. Another little passiflora with those trifoliate leaves. Well, it's got five leaves technically, but two are reduced. This is such a great plant, man. And nobody can learn, nobody knows how to germinate seeds of it. It's a hard one. I think it's mostly cuttings. They, that's another plant that needs full sun. Let's see what we got down here. Oh, look, we got a medzelia. The Velcro leaf family, because those leaves, due to all those tiny little hairs, will stick to you. You got five petals, many stamens, one style in the middle. Yeah, look at those leaf margins. Look at those hairs on it. This is Oligosperma or Lindheimeri. I don't fucking know. There's like three different species that occur here, and it's kind of a... The characters are very... The character traits that distinguish one species from another are very subtle. Look at that. There's that fruit. You can see the sepals are persistent. You get that uh, fruit maturing. It'll turn into a little brown capsule. Dump out all the seeds when it's uh, mature. So here's that Ipomea. Look at those massive flowers. Oh, that one. You can see. What is that? The stigma down in there? Here you've got uh, the stamens. Oh, is it dioecious? Is there a stigma inside there or those? I can't tell. Definitely pollen. That's definitely stamen. But is it a unisexual flower or bisexual? I always like learning about, just paying attention to the breeding systems of some of these things. It's cool. The pollinators they evolve with. There's the calyx on those flowers before they open. And there is the leaves. Nice vine. There's a lot of invasive members of this genus. This is a native one. Yeah, I was saying this was caliche, but this actually might be volcanic. I just looked at the geologic map, and it is, uh, look at that, uh, Aclysanthes, Anisophila. That's a cool one. I looked at, uh, the map, and it is, it's Catahoula Formation, which has a 27-million-year-old volcanic, uh, layer in it. Basically, outfall from a big, big volcanic eruption. That went off 27 million years ago. As, as indicated by radiometric dating. Oh yeah, this is this is volcanic ash. This is the same exposure you get further east of here, to the south in Stark County. You know, right by the dollar store, when you're coming around the bend, seen quite a few accidents there, due to the many terrible drivers of the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, look how soft this stuff is. Look at this. This isn't caliche, this is volcanic ash. Look at that. Shit. It's like a powder. This is a 27 million year old volcanic ash flow. That's fucking cool. Wow. Here's the Hefia again. Jeffia. Sweating like a pig. Oh, God. Look at that nice escarpment. There's the Thymophila, and there's a derelict hunting lodge that uh, had a swarm of killer bees living inside it at one point. Probably a few rattlesnakes, too. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all ash. It's just silica. It's just, just very soft silica particles. I'll try to go up this and probably break my ass. The whole thing's going to fall apart. Oh, this is some nice-looking caliche here. Caliche mixed with volcanic ash. Look at that. That's a perfect Cremaria ramosissima flower. 
Weird, huh? Pollinated by oil collecting bees. And then there's those. I oh don't know, the fruits aren't maturing yet. Stenaria nigra cans, coffee family, rubiaceae, four petals. Low growing habit, doesn't get that big. Holy shit, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Look at that lizard. Look at that massive beast. Hello, you beautiful beast, you. Oh, look at him. So skeptical. Look, he's got a collar on. How'd you do that, huh? Let's see how he is. What's he doing? Where'd he go? Did I lose him? Oh, shit. Oh, that's cool. That guy, it was a blue spiny lizard. Scoloporus is a genus, which I love. Western fence lizard, the spiny lizard. That was a more tropical variation on a theme he just went around here he just rolled around i don't know where the hell he went i'd love to go see him he doesn't want to hang out though he's a, he's feeling antisocial look at how so this is looks like true caliche i can't tell see there's the caliche right there and then there is the volcanic layer you could see it's just beneath it so that's all volcanic ash and then above it is caliche and they can look a lot alike but the caliche is a lot harder this is a nice precipitous cliff. Let's check this out. Holy shit, look at that Thelosperma. That's crazy. Thelosperma simplicifolium. That's a cool one. With those yellow disc flowers. So this species is what you call suffrutescent. See, it's got a woody base, and then it kind of turns into uh, herbaceous, you know, softer foliage up above this is fucking great you don't see this one too much at least i have it look at the gunk naughty look at enough watley looking so good god i just i got a thing for plants that just grow in really shitty <laughs> places i mean they're doing fine here it's not shitty to them see over there is where you would find paranychia congesta wonderful paranychia congesta super rare plant endangered it's up for being placed on the endangered species list next year. Don't tell the Attorney General that. The Texas Attorney General has a hard-on for rare plants. Just ideologically, he's opposed to them existing. What a prick. Look at that. Look at how healthy that looks, just on the shady side. That thelosperma. God, that's so great. Yeah, I mean, there's so many plants here that I'm just... It's criminal that nobody's growing them. It's just fucking tragic. Nobody is growing. Why is there not like a large native plant nursery that can supply the whole state of Texas? Centrally located, okay? That way it could grow stuff from the north, stuff from the south. And just sell it wholesale. You know? Well-funded native plant nursery. This little euphorbia I keep seeing and just ignoring. And I, I apologize. It's one of the spurges. A little, a little mat euphorbia. I should probably take a photograph of it. And log it. I think I've seen it before, but still. Look at that little Jatropha dioica. Must be a seedling getting gone. Because I don't see any others. Normally these form colonies and there'll be like 20 straws, brown straws, poking up from the ground. Like you see over there. That must be a seedling. I guess it could be a rhizome that just ran that far, but that'd be unlikely. Oh, Comalina erecta. It's a cool one. Those yellow things are not anthers. They're not providing pollen. They're just duping bees in, trying to get them to go in. And then uh, the true anthers are down there, those little sickle-shaped things. That's what douses the pollinators. The pollen. Oh, no, you know what? Those two central anthers in the middle. Got three different kinds of anthers there. Those two central anthers are probably good. They're probably, uh, they're probably releasing fertile pollen. They're not just feeder pollen. Oh, Dahlia frutescens. It's a West Texas species. It's growing on this caliche. And, uh, see, we're on the caliche, and then we start getting down into the, uh, more into the volcanics. Those Catahoula Formation volcanics. Look at that. Isenhardia texana, a.k.a. the fiddlewood. It's a legume. I can hear it. It's so dense with pollinators, I can hear it. Here's those flowers, related to uh, what's well, in the Amorpha tribe. So it's related to Amorpha canescens, which many Midwestern uh, native plant people will know. You gotta put this, these are such great shrubs to put in a yard. 
So anyway, now we're on a rocky section of the land. As you can see, all these gravels sourced from various mountain ranges, disparate mountain ranges uh, throughout western Texas and even New Mexico, brought here by an ancient Rio Grande River at some point in the last, I don't know, five, six million years. You can see they've all been rounded. But look at some of these things, man. Look, look. What? How much? How? How much energy? What kind of river would it take to move a rock that big? Senegalia berlandii, black brush, acacia, vichelia rigidula, widelia hispida. I saw that planted in front of the Starbucks in a Rio Grande City the other day. Look at these rock piles. A lot of good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff out here. Ah, I could smell the coma blooming, the Sideroxylon celestrinum. Ah, yes, the elusive gravel bars of South Texas. These guys are especially weird, these white ones. If you, uh, you can see this one, this is one too. It's just dirty, but if you strike them together in a dark room, you can see uh, lights on the inside of the rock. Not sparks, but you'll see lights on the inside of the rock. It's the most bizarre shit ever. Jesus Christ, those windmills are loud as hell. Sounds like there's a bearing out or something. Sounds like, uh, you know, sounds like uh, you got your tennis shoes in a dryer or something. But look at this. That always blows my mind. I mean, these gravel deposits are so extensive in South Texas. Literally, they span for hundreds of miles. They'll disappear. They'll pop up again. But the rocks in them are all rounded, indicating being tumbled in water for quite some time. Oh, nice to kind of serious any And, uh... And they're sourced from all over. The, I mean, there's different all different kinds of rocks in here it's wild so this must have been a river that was flowing with a lot of energy for a long time like a few hundreds of thousands if not millions of years at least yeah see there's one of them lightning rocks see that those little white quartz pebbles i seen the uh the mammalaria spherica first and then I saw uh, that little guy, a little peyote, second. This is Cactus Gardens of South Texas, such cool habitat. Oh, look, see, there's another one, another little peyote. You got a yucca, traculiana, black brush, of course, just covered in a smorgasbord of lichen. Really three or four different species. Carwinskia, a kind of serious any acanthus. Oh, wow, there's a lot of peyote back here. There's a double-headed one. Looks like a pig or something was trying to dig into the gravel right there. There's a little, oh, look, it's a little uh, Aclysanthes and it's a phyla trying to come up beneath that uh, Senegalia legume pot. More peyote there. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch. It's nice. It's nice to see. There's quite a few ones. Oh, look, they're flowering. Hey, guys. Nice to see you. God, I wonder how old. And then there's that Mammillaria spherica. Yeah, I always get skeptical. If, I, if I'm showing people plants and all people care about is peyote, I'm definitely skeptical. I call bullshit on that. Anthropocentric worldview. Selfish worldview. Come on, say these say nice. Yeah, look at those guys. Look at how happy they are. Here we got Mammillaria. We got Ancestral Cactus. We got a bunch of peyotes. Probably all the same plant. Looks like that was cut. Probably by one of the licensed sellers down here. We are close to Mirando. Look at that, look at that nice farina, that layer of long chain fatty acids. Is that another stem or is that a seedling? Either way, it's a perfect seedling bed right here for him. That's all one plant. Perfect seedling bed for him. You get all these gravels, you've got enough duff and organic material in the soil. The duff just comes off the overlying, oh, Diospros texana right there. Overlying plants. Look at that duff. Look at that rich layer of duff. They love it. They don't like the barren soil. They'll take it. 
But this, if this gets wet, this is going to stay wet for a while. And it's going to be hot as fuck. They can take more moisture depending on how hot it is. Peyote actually likes a lot of moisture if it's super hot. If it's below 80, they don't need much moisture at all. In fact, you shouldn't water them. They're going to rot. But, oh, that's great. Look at that. Mammillaria hydrite, too. I love all these plants. Guayacum angustifolium. This thing can turn into a small tree. But if you see a small tree guayacum, it's an old-growth specimen. You'll see them in a few places in South Texas. Look at that. Is that black brush over there? That's all one. See? You get multiple stems. If you see an old-growth guayacum, it's going to be a small tree. I've seen them in uh, Sierra Madre near Monterrey, Mexico before. Oh, this is, a, this is a great plant. God, it smells so good. White brush. Aloysia is the genus right there. Verbenaceae is the family. Aloysia gratisma with those tiny white flowers. And it's actually in seed. Those are the seeds, okay? Those are what the flowers end up looking like when they get pollinated. I'm just going to take a bunch right there. Take my hand like that. And then I'll, uh, well, i got to put the camera down, but I'm going to put this in a little bag. Okay, so we're headed to the caliche spot, but right here we got a really cool little native flax in the genus Giliastrum, Polymoniaceae. Look at those tiny little flowers. Desert thorn scrub flax. Cool native grass, too. Anyway, uh, there's another suffrutescent plant. It's got a woody base, got a woody root that it can die back to, and then when it needs to go off during uh, the good times, it just uh, sends up a little flower. Look at those hairs. Hairs and scales on the on those leaves. Look, triffid leaves. Okay, so here we are at the Caliche deposits. You can see very unique plant community. It's a very unique geologic setting, so you've got a very unique cast of species. That Zinnia austrotexana is everywhere. We still got the Senegal Senegalia berlandii, right? We got the Caliandra conferta right there, which needs to be grown more. I need to see that in cultivation. But uh, hopefully we're going to find this Perinicchia as well. It likes these caliche deposits. Barry's with us now. Barry, he's such a bad boy. He had to have a shock collar on him, but he's, you know, he's good at heart. He just, yeah, I do worry about him and rattlesnakes, but, uh, you know, I'm just his uncle. So look at that Zinnia Austrotexana everywhere. Did I just pass the buck? Yes, I did. Cromeria, Savalia sinuata, Caliandra. We got Tetranura scoposa out here, too. Actually, this is not. Caliche, remember, this is, uh, as it turns out, there's a little bit of volcanic ash in here as well. A lot of this is actually volcanic ash. This stuff is all volcanic ash. Oh, that sun, I was hoping it would stay. Stay away for a little bit longer. Oh, fuck. Look at that. There's that passion flower. Passiflora tenuoloba. How's that for heat tolerance? Growing out of caliche. It's not on a caliche road in 101 degree heat. You normally think uh, passion flowers are tropical, but don't normally associate them with deserts. This looks good. Look at this Boodaloo trifida. Such a cool little native grass. Underappreciated little native grass forms those cool little tufts. Oh, look, Barry's in the shade. Louis back at the truck. Barry's in the shade. Got a little Escobaria. Right there, Escoteriana, little Nama. Aspicarpa right there, Malpighiaceae. Where the hell? As Aspicarpa hysopifolia is the species name, forgot to mention it. What the Mophila. Where the shit is this thing? I know it's gotta be here, man. This, this looks spot on for the habitat, but maybe not. God, I love this plant community. It's dangerous. It's hot. Look at all the thymophila and all the lichen. Tread gently. God, everything smells amazing. Look at this. Who do we got here? A little geophyte. That's a toxicoscordian or what? Caliche deposits for you and me. But I'm not seeing any Perinicchia. Dahlia frutescens, that's kind of weird to see down here. More of that Zinnia, Tetranura scoposa, looking really good. 
right there. And we have Euploca torii. That's a good indicator plant. It's like it's pollinated by small flies or gnats. Boraginaceae. Could be small moths too. Do you see them? These things are everywhere. These little lizards. Where'd he go? I can't even see. Oh, there he is. There he is. Can you see him? Look at that. Blue spiny lizards. They got a collar. Northern extent of their range here. I see you, buddy. Just kind of caught this guy crawling him. Just caught this guy crawling him. He's a walking stick. What's up, buddy? How you doing? God, he's fucking weird looking, but cool. Ah. Oh. They blend right in. All right, let's put you down. Let's put you down on a Caliandra. Look at all these caves. There's caves everywhere. Look at the Thymophila. It looks so much more full here because they're getting all the runoff. There's little competition and they get all the runoff. Acts like a little funnel whenever it rains. Same thing, you know, pavement does. Oh, this is cool. Look, it's a species of Manfreda, basically an herbaceous agave with the uh, perennial root. Look at that speckling, too. I don't think that's Longiflora. It looks quite different. Longiflora leaves are a little bit more toothed. Look at that, just coming up on these cryptogamic soils, these soil crusts. There's some more right there. You'll probably get a lot bigger in cultivation. Oh, look, you got a Jotropha dioica, and you have Ancestral Cactus shiri as well. Oh, guys, how about that? Cool little cactus, but Caliandra conferta and Jotropha are the dominant plants here. Oh, I'm really getting cooked. That cloud is really saving the day right now. Tetranurus scoposa, Physeria fendleri, Stenaria nigricans, the Euphorbia species that spurred Savalia sinuata. It's our little plant community right here. There's no Paranichia congesta, curiously enough. Really weird. Ah, I feel like I'm going to pass out. A lot of good stuff, though. Zinnia austrotexana. So much good shit. Where's this little Paranichia? Underappreciate. I'll never underappreciate a Paranichia again. All this little scrub stuff. It's so weird to not see it here. This is, this is the habitat. This is what it likes. The mystery deepens. Why is it so rare? Who knows? You know, again, this this all, it's caliche up top, but then it's volcanics here. It's that Catahoula Formation volcanics, which are not calcareous. So maybe it's a calcareous obligate plant, which would be kind of weird because I think most plants that only grow on a certain calcareous substrate don't need it they just can tolerate it but uh who knows with this plant or maybe it just never got dispersed here who knows I don't know all kinds of fun shit to think about yeah, no luck it's all right this beautiful old Sideroxylon celestrinum it's a coma is the common name Makes edible fruit, and it makes these flowers that smell fucking fantastic. God, they smell so good. Little five-petaled flowers. See that? Sapitaceae is the family. Got spatulate leaves. It's a big one. Really tough native tree that makes edible fruit. Oh, who doesn't love a nice pencil cactus? A kind of serious postelgar. Look at that. It's a juicy, it's a juicy young man. <laughs> it's like a Tom of Finland painting in cactus form. Well, not really. That's just my filthy mind. But uh, there you go. Just camouflage. Just buried in this dahlia. You got the steel of sperma right here, too. Some of those dahlias get that cool parasite. That Pelostyles parasite. Black brush, you got Caliandra confertifolia, or is it Caliandra conferta? I forget. Anyway, that guy right there, beautiful, with that divaricating branching. A lot of nice stuff on this caliche. 
Well, you know, as you get all this Varilla Texana, this succulent member of the sunflower family, Asteraceae, often co-occurs with the Astrophytum, but right there you've got uh, that rare species of Aphalon. It's Aphalon, I think it's multiflorum, but I think it's a, a weird ecotype. Down here in South Texas, you can see it's that Achlorophyllus plant that's just parasitizing the roots of this, and here is an old one. I'm collecting Quinquilla lobata, this little uh, purple purple nightshade that's uh, right there. You can see it's got little, uh, little tomato-like fruits in that paper capsule. But anyway, I found this in the, uh, just in the wash right here. It's an old root. You can see the root connection of that apollon to that uh, varilla, and then there's, a, there's one popping up. So apparently it's a, it's a cool, that's a cool one. Nice parasitic, who doesn't love parasitic plants? Yeah, what a beautiful plant community, man. Look at all this. Leucophyllum frutescens, Thymophilus simplicifolium, Tetraneurus scoposa, Zinnia austrotexana, Croton and Canis, Tequilia canescens, Eplocatorii, Savalia sinuata, that chalky mint green color, Physaria fendleri, Thymophila, looks like Pentakita. I don't know the grass. <laughs> I did at one point. Oh God, man, so unique, so underappreciated, so undervalued, and just getting fucked. Here's a cool one. I've never seen this before. Camacrista texana, and interestingly enough it's enantiostylus which if you'll remember from many obnoxious uh, previous lectures i've done is a method to that plants engage into uh it's basically the mirror image flower phenomenon where they they're trying to prevent uh self-pollination it's a way to prevent outcrossing see how that style is not in the center it's off to the side so in order to pollinate it the bee's going to have to have pollen on that side of its body which means it's going to have to visit a completely another completely different flower where the stamens over here are not on the right side but on the left side so this can only be pollinated by another flower due to the position of the pollen on the bee's body pretty pretty ingenious and a number of uh, unrelated plants do that this camacrista camacrista texana i think it's its own species de designation now it used to be flexuosa te variety texana now i think it's just texana uh, i didn't know it did that you can see it's just got but it's still got those mimosa like leaves and it's just spreading just it's a it's a creeper it's a cool croton too. Here's that weird Physaria in flower. Just looks like every other fucking Physaria flower from this region with those banana shaped answers, anthers, six stamens, four petals, four sepals, but again those scale like leaves. And it's a perennial. It's got a little woody stem down there. What the fuck? But that coalescent form too is is curious to me. It's not forming a little ring, a little rosette. Look at all the fucking wind farms, but it's still, aside from the wind farms, you can see for miles. There's not a fucking Dollar General in sight or any other hideous shit. Holy shit, there's a Liatris down here. What the fuck? It just looks like Punctata. That's crazy. Liatris Punctata in South Texas. Wild. Look at how, look at how big that corn must be, too. That whole thing is the corn. Holy shit. That whole base right there is the corm of that plant that's incredible jesus christ that's a surprise i didn't know we got that liatris down here god there's so much nice stuff how much nice stuff can you take this is paranichia congesta caryophyllaceae check out those little flowers really cool uh landscape too got liatris punctata there stenaria nigricans Savalia sinuata synthela sperma Bunch of cool stuff here. But this plant is not that dominant, and it's so goddamn rare, apparently. Look at that. Let's see if I see any more. I don't see any more. Christ. And this is the only location in the entire world that it's known from. Right here. Gotta wonder about plants like that. Real bizarre. Oh yeah, there's another one. That's Stenaria nigra cans too, that little white flowered rubiaceous bastard. See that? Four petals. Those little hairs on the petals. Yeah, this thing, I mean, really, it's that blue foliage that gives it away. What's this? Is this one too? 
Yeah, there you go. There's another one right there with Liatris punctata. Ah, that's nice. That's cool. That's the fucking new one. Yeah, that's Stenaria nigra cans as well. God, what a weird plant. What a weird plant community, too. I could see why it's restricted to this edaphic setting. So you got a flower that looks like a little star, like every other Paranechia. And then I suppose it's called congesta because those, uh, those lateral branches are congested. They're shortened. It's just a bunch of tiny little leaves with uh, barely any node between the leaves. So that they're so congested, it just looks like, like little tufts. Yeah, look at that. Christ, that's cool. Definitely adaptation to this fucking brutal environment. Oh, yeah, there's another one right there. See that? They really don't get that big. Oh, there you go. There's another one. That's a larger plant. See, it's got that branching. The uh, inflorescences are up above those little leaves, those congested glaucus and tomatose leaves. They're more like pubescent. I Maybe hispid. You need a thelosperma. God, this is a cool sight. There's a whole bunch of cool shit there. Jesus.